Hello and welcome to the Yoga Life Podcast with me, Kevin Boyle. It's episode two, where I wanted to share with you eight things that I wish I knew when I first started teaching yoga. There's two main areas I can cover. There's the teaching side and there's the business side. I feel that that the most important thing is teaching. So it doesn't matter how good your social media is, how good your branding is, the most important thing is how good your classes are. So I'm going to focus on the teaching side of things, the essentially your classroom craft. And this isn't me comparing myself to other people, other teachers, um, because I actually don't really go to any other teachers. I do my own practice at home. Um, and plus, this is more so if I could have a conversation with myself when I first started, what would I tell myself? So without further ado, number one, be vulnerable. When I was in my 200 hour teacher training, I constantly thought I'm the only person here that can't sit cross-legged comfortably. How can I teach yoga if I can't sit cross-legged? And this was always a source of awkwardness for me and, and slight embarrassment in any class. And especially if the teacher gives you three blocks to sit on, <laughs> it doesn't make you feel uh, too good about yourself. But what I've come to realize is that having vulnerabilities allows you to have greater empathy. And if you have greater empathy, you can connect with people more. People feel more comfortable in your class. The way to navigate this is that if you can't demonstrate a full expression of a pose you can highlight someone in the class another student who can do the pose and that will uh, allow you to instead of trying to break your neck getting into poses that you can't do to um, give someone else a chance to shine as it were and um, and feel good about themselves and it's a really nice way to bring another student into the classroom into the teaching aspect with you acknowledge when you've messed up laugh it off and make sure you correct this so if you are mixing up your left and your rights accept that you've made a mistake let your ego subside and give your students the class they deserve which is a balanced one often you'll see teachers who will make a mistake and just try and brush it over because they don't want to admit that they've done something wrong and um, this the students can see through this so this is something that you have to be honest with yourself and if anything it makes you more human more vulnerable number two practice every day i if you teach every day you should practice every day it doesn't have to be a 90 minute vinyasa class or even asana it could be one or two poses or it could be sequences or if it's nothing physical at all it could be reading philosophy uh, breathing techniques, meditating, but essentially practice what you preach. Embody your yoga so that when people meet you, they know, okay, this person practices on the regular. For me, there's nothing more satisfying in a class if I'm the student and the teacher will say something like, oh, I was trying this yesterday and this is what I found. Maybe try this too and see what you think. It makes it way more real because you know they're a, not just a teacher, they're a practitioner as well, a regular practitioner. Number three, include everyone. Look after the beginners. If you see some geezer at the back of the class who can't sit cross-legged comfortably, look after him. That was me once and still is sometimes depending on how my hips are feeling early in the morning. The biggest need for yoga is for beginners. If you learn how to teach beginners child's pose, for example, the same principles can be applied to teach an intermediate class crow. The systematic approach of teaching should be the same no matter what the posture. So teach beginners, look after the newbies. Number four, be a host and create an experience. Improvise. If people wanted to come to a class uh, and just look at someone making shapes, they could quite easily switch on a YouTube video. Make sure that you create an experience for the students. So pretend like you're holding a, um, a dinner party 
and you're the host and the people that are coming are your guests. If you had if that was the situation, you'd have soft music playing, you'd have soothing lighting, yummy smells like essential oils or incense. And all of these factors should be the same when students come into your room. You're the host. So be the host or the hostess with the most s. <laughs> Make sure that people have a memorable, fond experience for that hour. It, like little things like the sense of smell can't be overlooked. The, the, I mean, it's, studies have shown. I'm not going to uh, um, reference any particular specific studies, but um, studies have shown that um, the sense of smell is closely linked with memory. Um, probably more so um, than any other senses. So things like when people smell lemongrass or peppermint or whatever you're brewing, um, that will tell them, okay, as soon as they walk in the room without even seeing you or hearing the music, that smell tells them they can switch off and it's time for yoga. With this, I think this is so vitally important being a good host. I want to add on to this actually. Wait at the door for everyone. Forget your warm up or what's happening on your phone. Even if you're just um, fixing your playlist, greet everyone at the door. Be available for people to chat to after the class as well. So at the start, you've given everyone individual attention, which is fine. So everyone's been acknowledged, they know that they're welcome. Now it's okay at the end of the class for people to take you to one side and, and have a bit one one on one coaching with you. Number five, encourage everyone. Use positive language and be aware when you don't do this. For example, it can be little things like instead of saying, um, don't let your knee touch the floor, you could say, hover your knee an inch off the floor. I find this area of teaching fascinating because we really underestimate how much language affects our emotions and how it affects the people around us. Number six, touch people which sounds a bit dodgy, but what I mean is adjust people only if they need it. So if they don't need it, then don't do it for the sake of it. This, I mean, this depends on how strict you are on alignment, but the more and more I study and teach, the more my thoughts are evolving on this. At the start, when I was in my 200 hours, it was very awkward. I was the only guy in the training course. And that means that essentially I'm having to touch women and it just was it just was awkward i'm sure you can probably imagine why but now i'm currently at a stage where i'm confident enough that as long as um, safety first is upheld then explore different ways to help people get into yoga postures and understand their body in a deeper way the power of physical touch can't be underestimated if you've ever experienced acupuncture or a massage or even a really nice hug you'll understand this and um, the power of touch itself could be an episode um yeah that's an, that's another topic but really interesting number seven hold space what does that mean learn when to shut up give people a chance to hear their breath to experience their practice without the need to compete with you or with other yogis you may know loads about alignment about philosophy about breathing but there's no need to constantly be talking because this is just it turns into noise so know when to shut up <laughs> please number eight be open to change and grow Th growth as a practitioner and teacher pick teachers that you admire so if you're constantly asking yourself what makes them great it's going to help you to become great. Identify people that you admire and see which areas they are excelling and which areas you feel like you could develop to help you elevate to another level of teaching. For example, if your focus is almost exclusively on the physical practice, develop your knowledge of philosophy, breathing techniques. Uh, if you are wonderful at staying on your mat, and making beautiful demos, try walking around the room and interacting with people more. If you're looking to um, get better, it's really good in life to have role models. And I think that is going to help to give you a path to evolve and to progress. There's so much more I could say on this topic, but 
for now, I'll leave it there. Um, the other side of, of yoga is the business side. But for now, the most important way to market yourself and to create a brand, if I don't like that word, is to teach great classes. So I hope that helps. And I wish I knew this when I first started, which wasn't too long ago. Um, if you like this episode and it was helpful to you, then please leave five stars on iTunes. Um, thanks for listening and I hope you have a good day. Chat to you next week. Bye.